Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a brand new video. Hold on one second. I just realized my drink is empty, and if I don't want to cough through this recording, I need another drink. Give me one sec. Anybody else have a favorite monster? I go from the Monster Juice Chaos. Good stuff. Anyway, let's get back to this video. So today I'm making a tutorial that is a requested tutorial. I've been meaning to make this for days and then I got sick on Christmas and just have been sick ever since. So talking is hard. Um, not coughing is hard. Breathing, I can still kind of do that. So that's a good thing. But this video is to explain how to take maps from an old game called Rubies of Evertide and move them over to the Contract Jack multiplayer demo to use them as first-person shooter maps. Now, the one issue with using them as first-person shooter maps with uh, your friends is, one, you need to be able to port forward with your router to run the server so your friends can connect. You have to trust your friends with your IP address. And you need to remember to close that custom open port whenever you're not using it so you don't accidentally, you know, let hackers into your system or something like that, which, granted, in 2019 or 2020 depending on oh my god new year's is in like two days new year's eve and new year's day oh my gosh wow i feel like i don't work at all this month but um <laughs> sorry so <laughs> i just realized what the date is i'm going i'm losing my mind um anyway what was i oh yeah close the port when you're done with it so <laughs> anyway or use a virtual private server and run the uh, server and installation on there and give that IP out and have it like Cloudflare protected or something. But the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the multiplayer demo installation and the Rubies of Evertide demo. So you can find both of these, <coughs> excuse me, damn it, <clears throat> you can find both of these on File Planet. That's where I got them. There's also going to be a link eventually on the Lith Archive forum. I just got to get it up. Um, or somebody can beat me to it. Whichever works. It's okay. But uh, so you want to install both of these. And I've already done that here in this folder. There's Ruby's right here and CJ right here. So if you notice, there's res files here. Engine.res, game.res etc but in rubies it runs off of folders it runs off of a simple res folder and then there's not any res files except for engine and sound the what you gotta pay attention to is moving over this res file there's certain files you don't want to move over you don't want s res you don't want object at lto you don't want c shell you don't want c res you don't want client effects and you don't want class hlp dot but you don't want the but but what you do want is worlds texture scripts textures texture effect groups text sprites um speed tree i believe Render styles and RS are not that important, but I'll leave them just in case there's custom ones. Don't need music. And you don't need interface. And you don't need client effects, I'm sorry. Now what you want to do is copy these and have... <coughs> My God. My God. I'm sorry, this is a bumpy recording. But you want to have them copied and ready because what you're going to do is over in this folder, you're going to have a game folder. And what you're going to do is take game.res, open it in WinRes LT, or use res extract. Go extract, yes, go to your installation archive of Contract Jack, which is going to be right here, and extract everything to the game folder. So that should extract everything here. And then you want to just simply paste the stuff that you copied. And this might take just a second. So I'm going to take another drink so I don't die. Trying not to die. I probably could have paused my recording for this. 
That's okay. It's whatever. Oh my gosh. So as this finishes copying, you'll see that you have the option to replace some files. <coughs> Excuse me. I really am dying. And what you want to do is you kind of want to go through this list. Some files are going to be higher quality from one or the other game. Um, and some of them are going to be specific to Ruby's or specific to CJ. So you can kind of go through and generally the files like one by one square, they aren't important. You can replace that with whatever. There are some files that are much larger. And from what I've gathered from looking at them, having the quote unquote larger ones is a much better idea because they're higher quality or just newer created files that CJ specifically needs. Because I believe Contract Jack came out after Rubies of Evertide, I think, from what I've looked up. But I'm not 100% on that. So, like, you want this one instead of this one. Those are fine. The same, the same, the same. <laughs> Trying really hard not to die. Whew. So you want, like, this invisible.dtx because it's probably higher quality. On this one because it's probably better. Huh. Scrolling. Probably want that one. There we go. And then just hit continue. So as you can see now. We have all this custom crap over here. Yeah, none of that got replaced because for some reason Ruby's doesn't have attributes, I noticed. Very strange thing. I've never seen a list tech game without attributes. So you want to run the game. We don't want display, we want this. And I like to use plus windowed one so the game runs in a window. You can also disable movies and Excuse me, music and sound. Okay, hit play. And as you can see, the game does start up, so that's a good sign. But we have to modify something here a little bit. So there's two things you can do. You can go that as a backup. And then you can change the name of the folder to dot res. Sometimes this works. And the only way to know if it's going to work with your installation is to just test it. Literally, I've noticed every computer is different, and sometimes this doesn't work on one computer, but it'll work on another. I am not sure why. The only way to find out is to test it, and as you can see, unable to find the game.res file, so it's not going to run it. Now, there is a workaround for that. Sometimes. What you can do is you can make a batch file. You can go new text document we're going to call it one dot or one run dot bat and what you can try to do is kind of like with the cmd cd slash tut yeah tut slash cj and as you can see if you go with tech exe It'll try to run the game, but you can't just run the game. You have to tell it something. So you want to go lithtech.exe dash res. Oh, shit. Dash res game. I'm going to add an S just in case. Basically, the same name as the folder. Cool, this time it worked. It didn't work last time. Oh, thank God. So you have to name the folder slightly differently than the actual res file or it's not going to work. So now that we know that the game's gonna run off of the folder, you wanna go edit on your batch file and do lithtech.exe-res games. And then you can do dash res 
engine.res because there is an engine file for all the render style files. And one thing that I forgot to bring over from ROE is sound effects. So as you can see, there's sound effects right here. Bring those over to CJ, just paste it here the same way. And you can go dash res sound fx dot res and then plus windowed one. And as you can see, the game should run off of this batch file now. So now that the game launches, that's very important. That means you've been successful at launching the game. What you need to do now for getting the server set up is kind of a nightmare. Um, but if you do, you'll do this once and then you'll never have to do it again. You go profile, create, and you want to create a profile called server. Hit OK. That'll create the server profile. And from there you can go options. You can mess with your settings here, but that's not really important. You want to go to, you want to go there. You want to mess with this stuff a little bit. Internet now is much better than it used to be, so you can do like 2048 and you'll be completely fine. Also, there's a bunch of players you can use as custom player models um, if you're going to be in game, but realistically, you don't need to worry about that. And you want to go to host. So you want to make sure it's on, you can do whatever game mode you realistically want for this, but you have to set up a different profile for every single one for running with the server file. <clears throat> You want the connection to be internet, and you want to name it whatever you want to name it. So we're going to call it ROE Tutorial Test. From there, default map set, you want to create a new map set and just name it the same way. Name it server. And as you can see, we only have two maps in here, and that's kind of a problem. But we can go back. We can see that map selection is server. We can lock it with a password if we want. We can allow... We can allow server commands, which is something you might want to do. And only people with access to the server are going to be able to use those anyway, so don't even bother with a password. Remember this specific uh, port? That's the one you have to port forward. I cannot show you how to port forward personally because every single router is different. But if you go on Google, simply look up your router, you'll be able to find tutorials on how to port forward with your specific router. And it's that easy. From there, you want to go options. You can choose max player. You can choose running speed. I always like to put it up to max. You can do a score limit, time limit, how many rounds, if weapons stay. So what weapons stay means is in between games, let's say you find a sniper rifle in the last map. The next map doesn't have a sniper rifle. If weapons stay is turned on, you'll bring that sniper rifle from the last game to the next game, regardless of the fact that map doesn't have sniper rifles spawned in on it. I like to turn that on. It makes it a little bit more fun. And then there's also weapons restrictions you can do. You can add or remove um, certain weapons from being used in the game. Go OK. And you want to turn on dedicated server. Yes. Hit launch. Unable to load game by. Well, that's freaking fantastic. I don't know why. <laughs> I've never had it say that before. That's weird. There we go. So if it crashes, it's not a big deal, it looks like. I've never had it do that before, but maybe that's just from running it in-game with the way that the folder is set up. When you open up the CJ private server, which... I'll make another video tutorial on how to modify this specific server. Um, you want to select server, click OK. Oh, why not? What if I do it the same way? exe res. Will that work? I've never actually tried that, so we're trying it on the fly. It does not look like it. Hmm. That's interesting. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to close this again. 
Yes, and there we go. So let's try this once more. Sweet, fixed it. So now let's hope that we can still run the game. Good, works. I don't know. It's very finicky, very touchy. I'm going to show how to modify the server in a different video anyway, and it'll be able to look for whatever folder you want it to, basically, I hope. But for now, just leave it as is, I guess. So now that the server and everything is running, you want to add your custom maps in. As you can see, in our folder, we don't just have these. We have all of these. And over on Lith Archive, I have a list right here of which maps do and don't work. So that's kind of important to follow because as you can see, some of them are just blank, some just don't load anything, and these other ones spawn you under the map or in water or an empty area. They're not all that important. So what you can do is simply delete those ones because they're useless and just taking up space. Um, 1200, 122, 126, 12, 127, 21, and, excuse my nose, I'm sorry, and from there you can delete those. So those custom maps have been removed. What you need to do now is create a custom multiplayer missions.txt. So simply copy and paste this, rename it whatever you want, mpserver.txt. Open it up and make sure it's not write protected. Sometimes it'll install as read only, so you want to make sure it's not. But as you can see here, there's mission 0, mission 1, and then level 0 name id photo default weapons i don't know what happens if you do a level one i've never tried that but what you want to do is you want to basically copy this and you want to add a new one so you want to edit and make it mission two this name id doesn't realistically matter but you need the map names so as you can see this window is way too big you want to go in and you want to do world slash let's say 101 one up oh, yeah 1101 sorry flipped it and from there if you have a custom dtx you can map it to it don't have one personally and then if there's any weapons you want to try to add you can simply go into guns models pv and you can try to add to it so you can do like AK-47, crossbow, deagle, grenade, and hit save. Now there is one more thing you have to modify. You need to go into profiles, look at server, make sure everything's right in here, just double check it basically. Then go to server here, go DM campaigns, and go to server.txt. You want to rename this file right here, MP server, and then you want to do mission two equals two. And for every single one that you add to that MP server.txt, you want to add here. Then hit, you know, S, control S to save it. And just to be safe, because this is the demo version of Contract Jack, it likes to basically edit these files and remove whatever you add to it. So if there's like Mission 2, Mission 3, Mission 17, it'll remove all of that if you don't have this set to read only. Now from there, since all of that is done and set up, you can simply go CJ server, select server. It didn't add the map. It didn't add the map. Did it modify my... No. <laughs> T 
didn't earn it. Okay, cool. Still didn't add it. So if it doesn't add it, that's not a huge deal. You can simply run the game. Kind of create that file yourself by going host. Go to uh, map selection. Go to maps. It doesn't even show them all in here. Why not? I bet you it's reading off of MP map, MP missions. Okay. This is, and a lot of people like to secretly complain that I don't edit my videos. This is why I don't edit my videos. Because every time I go in and try to do some of this stuff, for some odd reason, it doesn't work when I'm done with it. Or like there's a hiccup that a appears while I'm working on the video that hasn't appeared before. That's normal. So I like to show, hey, this is what can happen. <laughs> oh, you know what? Profile. Okay, it is on server. Host. Server. Maps. There we go. So remove all, add all. Okay. Okay, launch. It is a little bit easier to do it from in-game. And as you can see now, we have 101. And if I run the game again, you want to go in, make your own profile of your actual username. So go create. I'm going to be techx, obviously. You can go into your settings and modify things. I definitely recommend going to your mouse turning down sensitivity Jesus Christ it's insane <laughs> going back multiplayer join and as you can see since I'm running it locally on you know my local IP address of my computer it will pop up almost instantly so you can click that join game <coughs> give it a moment sometimes it'll look like it's frozen just wait Don't be an impatient little dickhead. <laughs> and as you can see, I am now actually in-game on the custom map from Rubies of Evertide. Now, obviously, I didn't copy over client effects because I didn't want to break anything with Contract Jack. So some things you're going to have to custom add and use like effects ED to add in this stuff. As you can see, though, all the edits I made they're here. Like, I can throw the grenade. I can use the crossbow. Oh, it has the exploding bolts. And then this is here as well. So, I can go in. I can do whatever I want on this map. I could get. I could port forward if I had the ability to. Um, my router's messed up, and I can't reset it to actually give myself the ability to port forward. But, for now, it's all set up, pretty much able to play, able to give out the IP address, do whatever I want, play with my friends if I wanted to, and have a blast. You know, it's, I don't think you're supposed to be able to see through that, but okay. Can you actually get up these bunk beds? You do get stuck on these ladders. Nope. Anyway, and now we're back outside. I've never explored this map before. Not like this, anyway. Huh. See, this is why I'd love to edit, have the ability to edit these maps. Because you could put, like, a gun right here that players could pick up. You could, like, hide body armor here or health pickups. You know, you could, like, put stuff on the roof. That people would have to parkour up and find a way to glitch up there to actually get to it. So, like, you could try to glitch up on top of this thing or something like that. There's so much you could do. And I'm going to try to get into more detail. But even these houses, you could put, like, ammo and stuff in here. Put stuff on top of here. There's so much potential 
that is just missed out on because we don't have the source of the maps. But it is what it is. It is a bit of a headache to get this working. But once it's working, you're done. So I'm going to quit. Yes. And I want to add more maps. Let's say I want to add maps from another game. Let's say the... Mm, I already tried Heat Online. I only have pictures of Headshot Online. We'll do SA. Why not? Oops. I thought I had an install of this. Maybe I don't. Never mind. Huh. Oh, uh, it might be here. That's TPS Rubies. I don't know where I put that install, but, <clears throat> you know, we'll use combat arms. Let's say I want to use a combat arms map. It's just as simple. You simply extract the world's file, grab the map file you want to use. Let's say, I don't know what happens if I try to load this. Desert Fox. Tut, CJ, game. And I know I didn't bring over textures or anything, so it's going to be ugly. But we're going to go back. Up oh, too far. And we want to modify this one. And we want to do mission three. what it was called right desert fox yep let's just change this to see what it does hit save you want to make it not read only because that's important save yes and then we also want to save over this one just in case it's using it <laughs> there we go so these two need to be read only. And then we also have to go into profiles, server. We need to add mission two equals two, mission three equals three. Save that. Mission three equals three. Save that. Let's make these read only as well, just in case. It should add that map by itself. Config has no maps. Interesting. So we're going to go in. Oh, because it's already running. There we go. So if you make it once in game, it looks like you can go in and manually edit and add the stuff to it. But we're going to go select mission. It didn't like that. I don't know why. Yeah, it does not like this map. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. see what map I spawn in on don't click or anything like I said because it is touchy if you get the program to stop responding it's going to kick you this is a really long video kind of sucks but that's okay come on there we go oh I spawned here so yeah it's not going to let me load desert fox interesting I wonder why not I mean, I've never tried it, so I guess it is what it is, but let's select that one. I cannot. Ah, player information. Cool. Options, leave game, quit, missions, resume game. Cool. So... That's basically what it takes to get this working. 
pain in the ass, I know, but we'll try to make it easier, maybe make a custom program, something like that. We'll figure it out in the future. As of right now, though, simple enough, I believe, that you can try to get it working yourself. If you don't get it working yourself, I am on planning. I am planning on making a new download of this specifically that's going to have maps from a ton of Lith Tech Jupiter games. Just an absolute crap load ton of Lith Tech games. Every map that I can find that works, I'm going to put in here and have a huge server that people can play on and play these maps. It'll have combat arms maps. Uh, sudden attack maps, crossfire maps. If I can get them working, I'll even have the Cyclone BMX maps. Um, Alien vs. Predator 2 maps, if I can get them working. Some custom maps by, like, Sleeper Cell. Um, maybe the Medal of Honor maps, if I can get them converted. I'm going to uh, get Block Fort uh, converted and working again from Mario Kart 64, the custom map that I made. And several other games and maps. This will probably have over 100 maps. This is going to be a huge download. But it's definitely going to be worth it in the end. So, as you can see, it's already a 1 gig file size. And I definitely need to find a way to shrink that down. Maybe make an installer where it downloads the stuff instead. I don't know. Because this is definitely going to get absolutely gigantic. But the entire point of the original project for this that I'm kind of basing this on and trying to grow again is TPS. TPS stands for the private server. The private server was a Gary's Mod attempt on Lithtech Jupiter. Again, this isn't something I can submit to Steam, for example, because it is a large game mod, not an actual game. If I use the Lithtech Jupiter source code and actually did a custom interface and everything like that, we could probably actually submit it to Steam. Huh. That's an idea. Make a couple custom maps and then just the rest of it'll be community supported mods through Steam Workshop. That's a weird idea. gonna have to look into that more but i'll try to make a second video on this where it's all condensed into okay the game's installed this is how you do it this is how you do it and i won't have any of the roadblocks that we hit in this video but i'd rather have this extended video posted to show the hiccups that i might have ran into in case you ran into those hiccups so let's get it working let's play some first person shooters let's have some fun together Peace out, guys.